Hold on. Live streaming is on. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the February 2021 meeting of the Baton Rouge Astronomical Society. Uh, tonight, we have got a, 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 a an oldie but a goodie in terms of speaking engagement. We've got uh, our good friend Merrill Kess, who's a, a long-term member. Not a, He hasn't been here since the very start, but uh, they haven't kicked him. He's been here just about since the start, and they haven't kicked him out yet, or at least after having kicked him out, they let him back in, um, even with that incredible beard of his. Um, but he is going to be talking about talking with us about the proper way to clean a mirror for a reflecting type telescope. This is something that everybody has at one time or another uh, wanted to do their scope, even though most of the time it's completely unnecessary, but sometimes it's unavoidable. Um, and if you're going to do it, you're going to want to do it the right way. And well, Merrill's done this enough that he's gotten to be pretty good at it. And he's going to give us a brief overview on the, the proper techniques on how to do it so that we can save this for posterity for anybody who, who's looking for mm -hmm. the ways to, to clean a mirror. Um, and we'll probably do a, a, a great little cooking show style demo with the overhead cam and the high production values at some point or another. Um, we just uh, couldn't figure out the best way to do it this week. And actually it's, it's crazy. We had a, uh, not that long ago, if you go to our uh, discord or our uh, Reddit site, you can see a, uh, an actual demonstration that one of our members had cleaned a, an absolutely trashed mirror um, that was lost during the flood of 2016. And he was able to rehabilitate it into something which is of just phenomenal quality. Mm -hmm. um, but he had some reason he, he didn't realize that we were looking for a mirror to clean and looking to do this demonstration. Um, so he, he cleaned it before we had a chance to, to film him doing it. But he, he did take some great pictures of the process. Um, and the, what we're going to be going over tonight is exactly how he did it. Um, and one of the ways that he did it was he, he let the mirror soak for a week um, in the tub of water to, to make sure that all the, the browning motion, browning motion would uh, wash it away as gently as wash away the debris as gently as possible. Um, and, and much unlike the way the flood waters so abusively attacked it to, to begin with. Um, so without further ado, and with that prolonged introduction this time, I'm going to throw it over to, to Merrill so that he can uh, begin his talk. Uh, Merrill? Yeah. yeah. Well, uh, you were teasing me about my beard, but you don't realize how good it worked for cleaning uh, optics. You know, it makes a great brush. But um, now... Um, Sooner or later, everybody who has any kind of optics has to clean it. And uh, there's a variety of methods that can be used um, it, uh, depending on the type of optics and uh, the surfaces that, that you have in the coatings and so forth. Uh, most, I mean, there are some very basic uh, methods that are applied to all basic soap and water. Um, but there are some differences between lenses and mirrors for example, this secondary mirror or this primary mirror on this telescope. And um, <clears throat> we'll go over some of those. Um, we'll cover mostly the, the mirrors because most of us have a reflecting telescope of some sort. Um, I find that lenses are a little bit easier myself because there's a variety of things you can do. Uh, there are plenty of uh, lens cleaning kits for, for lenses that you can buy for cameras that work just as well on telescopes. So, um, you know, I don't think we need to spend as much time on that, except uh, to say that uh, no matter what optic you're cleaning, uh, be sure to use something, some kind of solvents that are very, very gentle and uh, mild, because whether they have coatings on them or not, they're very delicate. And um, even, even lenses, the coatings on lenses uh, can be degraded very quickly if you use the wrong type of cleaner on them. Um, and I, we'll get into that in a little bit. Um, but basically, um, oh, thank you. Appreciate that. Um, it's going to work much better than this dirty rag that I have. But um, We'll cover uh, mirrors. Uh, you know, the first thing I think people need to think about is when is a good time to clean a mirror? And um, my answer is when you really notice a difference in the light gathering ability. And you can have a, a dirty mirror that can cut the light down by 20% and you may not notice that much of a difference. 
until after you clean it. And then suddenly, oh, wow, it looks better, you know. But um, uh, the, the telescope upstairs in the observatory here is filthy. I don't know if you've noticed it. But I, I think everybody who's looked down the tube might have seen where um, years ago, uh, Brad, had a, Brad Schaefer had a class and a rainstorm suddenly came up on them and they scrambled to try to shut the shutter as quickly as possible. But still some water got on the mirror. And afterwards, they looked at the mirror and said, oh, my God, look how dirty that thing is, because everywhere the water hit, it cleaned it. And you could see this dark uh, contrast between the dirty parts and the clean parts. And it's remarkable. It's still like that. You can still see it. But, you know, for everyday use, we don't notice that much. Um, I think the, uh, the, the critical difference, though, is whenever we get down to the lower magnitudes, you know, 17, 18, you know, and maybe even 19 with the uh, cameras, uh, that uh, you have difficulty picking up those very, very dim objects because of the, of the dirt and that's on the mirror. Um, a 10% uh, degradation in the light gathering ability can make a big difference when you're trying to pull in something 17th magnitude, or especially at 19th magnitude, it makes the difference between being able to see it at all or being able to pick it up and, and get usable data out of it. Um, but anyhow, um, you, can, you can use a mirror for a long time when it's fairly dirty and it won't hurt anything. Um, and I'll give you an extreme example. <clears throat> About 10 years ago, I was at the Deep South Star Party and this fellow who had just come from a star party out in the West, Southwest, traveled straight from that star party to deep South without stopping at his house. So his trailer was still loaded up from that trip from the previous star party. And he had a 20 inch job and he was putting it all together and said, man, there's something about this mirror. It's dirty or something. I can't figure out what it is. And so a few of us looked down the tube and oh my God, you can see grass. And what had happened is he had packed the mirror and threw a tarp over it and tied it down without realizing that when the wind was blowing, the tarp was flapping and touched the mirror. And it just beat the coating right off certain sections of it. There were, you know, two, three inch sections of it with just no coating at all. And other parts that were thin. And um, he said, oh, God, did I run my mirror? Well, we, well you ruined the coatings, that's for sure. Whether he ruined the, uh, the, 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 whether he scratched it or run the figure, we don't know. He'd have to test it, but it could be recoded. But even with all of that damage, he was able to use it that weekend. Uh, he noticed a difference, but it was still usable. Um, but anyhow, uh, let's get on. <clears throat> uh, this is a typical telescope mirror. You can see this is an eight inch right here. And uh, one of the things you have to be able to do is look at the mirror and see what is dirty on it and what might be um, degradation of the coatings or scratches. And you can see here, I don't know if you can see it well on this camera, there's a spot right about there and another one right about here. And those are degradations in the coatings. They have kind of a rainbow effect and there's nothing you can do about that. That's just, that's just damage to the coating. But those are small spots. That's nothing. That's not going to have almost no effect on your, on your uh, uh, um, star gathering, I mean, your light gathering ability. It's a tiny amount. Um, and yes, I'm, I see my writing on the back. This is one that was uh, flooded also, and I cleaned it afterwards. Um, so uh, I'll use this as the demonstration to tell how I did it. My favorite method, like Scott has already <laughs> described, my favorite method is to simply soak it in water. Uh, you can soak it in plain water or you can put a couple drops of very, very mild dishwashing liquid into it and uh, swish it around and let that just saturate into the dirt. Uh, before I go any farther with that, let no, me... It's basically the, the same idea as just like regular old Dawn liquid detergent. Yeah. This is the same thing that your grandfather used to do when he didn't want to do the dishes back before we had, you know, automatic dishwashers is you just pile all the dishes in the sink, run some water and let them soak for a while. Yeah. Um, but basically over time, the actual motion of the, the molecules in the water will cause the movement back and forth across it and it will yep. basically scrub it itself in the gentlest way possible. Um, and I think that's the, the 
if, if you the longer you let it sit, the more clean it will get. But eventually, obviously, you get diminishing returns. Um, yeah, that's that's correct. Yeah, um, and, and before I go too far into that, let me just talk a little bit about water. What water does? Water is actually what cleans it. Uh, the soap is not really anything except a catalyst, I guess you could say, or a, a um, an adherent, um, a surfactant. Uh, a surfactant is basically what soap is. Uh, it, it, in layman's terms, it makes water wetter. <laughs> it, it, whatever it touches, it it gives the water. It allows the water to soak into it more, um, or to to adhere to it, and carry it away. Uh, if you know anything about farming, uh, farmers use surfactants uh, to apply fertilizers. Um, a friend of mine was a soybean farmer, and after he got out of that business, he still had about eight 55-gallon drums of surfactant, just plain old soap. And he used it for everything. He gave me several gallons of it to use on our, 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 for our horses. And... Um, just plain soap, no detergents or anything else in it. I mean, no additional cleaners or enhancers in it, just plain soap. And, um, and it works great on mirrors. And, um, and, and that's really what you want. You want the simplest surfactant you can possibly get. Um, avoid any kind of detergents uh, or additional detergents that, in, you know, like, like um, or strippers or perfumes enhancers of any sort because sometimes those can uh, um, damage either the mirror or the coatings that you may have on it. Um, like um, Scott mentioned Dawn, uh, dishwashing liquid. For many, many years, Dawn was the best to use because it was the ba most basic and simplest in the market. Also dirt cheap. And um, oil spills. Um, people who rescued uh, oil-soaked birds would use Dawn dishwashing liquid to clean the oil off the feathers because it was the most gentle to strip the oil off without stripping the oils out of the feathers themselves. And it still allowed the bird to uh, have healthy feathers afterwards and it didn't irritate their skin. However, I'm having very great difficulty finding pure Dawn dishwashing liquid in the stores now because even the, the most simplest one says ultra and it's got enhancements in it that are really not what you need for this. I have used it before for telescope mirrors. It's not ideal, but it's the best I've been able to find. Unless you can find one that just says soap, or surfactant, and that's it, just period. Um, and that would be the, go with that. That would be even better. Um, no no uh, lotions of any sort, because lotions will leave streaks and oil coatings on the, on the lenses and mirrors too. Um, but like Scott said, the longer you let it soak, um, the more dirt will come up. And there is a point where you get to uh, diminishing returns where uh, you get to a point where if you let it soak any longer, it has to soak a much, much greater uh, period of time to get a much lesser effect um, uh, on the cleaning. And what I'd like to do is uh, do multiple baths. Um, I'll uh, do a bath for a day and then pour that off and then do another bath and then pour that off after a few days. And uh, it depends on the, uh, how dirty the mirror is. And each time you check the mirror to see how clean it is, you may not may be able to do it on the first one. That's uh, what Jacob did. He um, kept switching the water out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Jacob, you're muted, but uh, <laughs> uh, you can talk about that anytime you want to jump in. Cause uh, he had just had, Jacob is the uh, person who did the cleaning on that mirror that, Scott was describing, and he did a, a remarkable job. I put a link to the Reddit page in the chat. Oh, it's good. It's a little talk box in the corner for those who don't use it. It's got the before and after pictures? Yes. Oh, my goodness. When he showed me that, I'm like, well, that's at least you can't make it worse. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then, Monty, that's exactly why we gave it to, to Jacob to try off in the first place, is because he had found a mirror that wasn't in bad shape but he had never cleaned a mirror before. Um, so he said, well, start off with this guy here. And uh, you know, you can't ruin this, but you'll learn the basic technique, um, yeah. which is the, the same technique that, that Meryl's going through tonight. Um, and uh, it, it turns out, yeah, it's remarkably effective in terms of a technique. And this is a, a mirror that I really did not fear to just grab because the, the dirt on top of it was thick enough that it would 
you know, it covered the mirror like a, a, a cloth, basically. Um, so there was no more damage that could be done to the, the surface until, unless you just like rubbed it, rubbed the dirt on there. And this is the main thing that we need to watch when we're cleaning the mirrors is we want to be as gentle as possible so we're not actually rubbing the grime and the, the little minute particles and dust are very hard and we don't want to scratch the surface of the mirror. This was particularly important back when mirrors were originally coming out because they weren't coated in the same way they are today. Um, they were just a, a nice little silver substrate and the, the tiniest little scratch could leave nice little marks. And if you've ever seen your grand, great grandmother's antique mirror and it, it, it's got all these little streaks on it. And yeah, that's the same basic principle. The mirrors today are a, a lot better. They, they tend to be covered with a, a nice little film on top of the silver uh, to, to keep the, the you know, or coated so that it, the, it's a lot harder to scratch, but it can still be done. So we, we generally take care of it. Um, the thing to keep in mind, however, is that uh, while the primary mirrors tend to be coated, the, uh, the secondary mirrors tend not to be because the coating process is actually fairly expensive. Um, and the, the, those are, are it's much easier to scratch up. And you can see this one has little scratches in it. I don't know if you can see them well, but yeah, at that angle, you might be able to see a few blemishes. And there is one little spot on the edge that's, that's, that's damaged, a little black spot where the coating is at. Yeah, right about there. You can see a little black spot. And um, yeah, these are front surface mirrors. And looking at it, I can see quite a few scratches myself. And I don't know, think the camera's going to be sensitive enough, enough to pick that up. But yeah, there you go. Yeah. You better look at it. But anyhow, um, uh, yeah, I mean, years ago, people used to talk about getting like the little puffer brushes uh, that you get with uh, camera kits and just kind of go psh, 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 over the mirror and puff it or, you know, just a little or, you know, people used to go psh, psh, blow on it. And then we said, don't blow on it because you can accidentally spit on it. And yeah, I've ruined a lot of lenses that way by just like you you get on there and it's got a little bit of dust and you, you're not thinking when you're in the field and you just like blow on it and you spit all over it. And suddenly you've just, if you're in, you've ruined the eyepiece for the evening. Um, yeah. Same principle with the mirror. Um, well, the yeah. hurricane blowers are awesome. What's that? That's, yeah. that's what the little bulb things are called. They're called oh, yeah. hurricane blowers. That's why yeah. those are awesome. And well, those are great. Oh. I've gotten to really enjoy those. The the thing to avoid, however, is the, the canned air. And I'll, I'll let Meryl yeah. talk about why. Uh, yeah, yeah. And even with the little uh, puffer blowers, uh, hurricane, you call them? Is that yeah, the they're called hurricane blowers. Okay, I've never heard that term. That's what it said on my item list for my camp, for my photography class. It said, you have to get this, this, and this. And I'm like, what's a hurricane blower? They're like, oh, and she's like, is what my teacher did. Okay. Well, yeah, I mean, they work fine for lenses, but for first front surface mirrors, I'm wary about them because anytime you have any kind of um, motion that moves dirt across the surface, it has a tendency to put micro scratches on it. Mm -hmm. Even though you may not see it, if you have enough of them, it can degrade the surface. And um, and that's, that's uh, I, I try to avoid things like that. And that's why I try to do the soak first because the... Um, like Scott said, you know, just the Brownian motion will lift the dirt off the mirror and then you can move it off, pour the water off slowly so it's not raking quickly across the surface of the mirror. You know, it, it just rolls off very slowly and then, um, you know, it'll, it'll carry the dirt away. The water will carry the dirt away rather than raking it across the surface. And um, the, uh, uh, the, the, um, the, like I said, the more times you do it, the more will come up. Um, but there again, you have to look at it each time and evaluate whether you, you're finished with it or not. Another method that people have used for a long time is just to use cotton balls. And um, what we like to do with these is get pure cotton balls. Don't get the synthetic type, type uh, because the synthetic type um, are sharp, have sharp fibers. And the sharp fibers can scratch the coatings. These are much more uh, softer. I mean, this is pure cotton, so it's much gentler. Um, and this is for, you have cases where you soak it and you soak it and you soak it and you can't, something's just not coming off. There's a little thin film of something just won't come off with just the soak. And I've had that before. In fact, I had that with this mirror 
and I had to use the cotton balls. And what you do is you, you dip, you stretch it out to where it's, you know, kind of like this, you know, stretch it out and make like a little broom out of it. You dip it in the water, you get it wet, and then you just gently, barely touching the surface, you just kind of slowly rake it across in very small strokes, just barely touching it. And let, you're, not really, you're not really scrubbing it. What you're doing is you're just stimulating the cotton to loosen the, the dirt and let, it, let that dirt float up into the water. And so you can see, you don't put pressure, you just lightly touch and you just do little strokes and you just keep moving that around as you need to, to clean the salt until the whole mirror is done. And you uh, also um, want to make sure that you don't like use the same spot on the cotton ball because yeah. you'll transfer dirt and scratch it with the dirt. Yeah, that's like uh, a lot of people uh, who go to car washes that use the brushes. They don't like it because the dirt, they picked up dirt and grime from the previous car and it, it's still in the brushes. So it's raking it over the finish of your car and putting micro scratches in your finish. Uh, the other thing maybe to point out, go the same direction, right? Don't, yes. don't, yeah. Oh, thank you. Yeah, uh, if you want to say why, go ahead. I'll let you. Okay, well, what, what's, what Corey is referring to is using, when if you do use a cotton swab, you just go in the same direction at all the time. You don't want to do this and you don't want to do this, especially because all of those are grinding things and just smear it's smearing dirt and oils around for one thing. And uh, then, but if you do this, it, 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 you're not, um, you're not putting dirt back. You know, it's better to go uh, like one way, turn it, go over the next section, turn it, go over the next section to the side, turn it, go over the next section to the side and then change cotton balls. Don't be afraid because you get a bag like this, they're plentiful. And if you want, just do one sweep across, throw it away, get a, get a new one if you want to be extra careful. And that would be the safer way to do it. Um, to me, there's nothing difficult about, about any of this. The materials are plentiful. Why, why be stingy? You know, just go ahead and use them up and, um, uh, and you'll, you'll be okay. Regarding water, okay, uh, don't use tap water because tap water has impurities. Even the city water, filtered water, my well water is double, uh, is, is um, a double filtered. I don't wanna even use that. I use distilled water. Um, this, you see that? Smart water, Don't things like that. Don't use it because that's got minerals in it. You know, any kind of um, bottled water like this. Um, but, this is just plain old distilled water. I don't know if you can see the water label. That's what you want. It's plain old distilled water. Usually about less than a dollar a gallon. Sometimes maybe more, I don't know, but it's cheap enough. And you don't need that much. One gallon is probably going to be more than enough to, to clean this mirror. Um, and, um, you know, it'll, it'll, it'll do multiple soaks and also multiple washes. Um, one thing that, um, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to ask your opinions on this because I've done this before and I've, I've found it has results and other times other people have different opinions. They, um, take a tub like this and I'll mark this down to where you can see it and then put some water in it, put the mirror in this is, you know, you take it out of the cell, the, the holder, in other words. I'm not taking this mirror out because we got it mounted the way it wants to go. But you soak it in water like this. Now, then you take it out and you rinse it when you're done, you know, rinse it off. Some people will put water in and then kind of swirl it slowly. And very, but very gently, you don't want to get a fast currents going in there, but just gently swirl it a little bit. And I've heard mixed opinions about that. I don't really see where it makes that much difference as long as you're being gentle about it. it Cause it moves the water around and it picks up dirt and moves it off. Um, if it deposits it back on, you can easily remove it before you take it out because you're gonna rinse it anyway. 
I, and, I think uh, whether it makes some people even pick up the whole thing and swirl it around like this with the water swirling over the mirror, uh, which I think might be a little bit harsh, but you know, that's, it should, it shouldn't hurt it either. It should be fine. I, I think that the, whether or not you actually, I, I, I like to just like walk by every once in a while and mind you, I'll let it soak for a week or so. So I walk by every once in a while and I just sort of move the water once or just like get a gentle swish going. And uh, yeah. whether it helps or not, it, at the very least, my uh, my anxiety riddled brain that can't stand to let a thing sit for a while without yeah. doing anything. Um, yeah. This is it's it's I had a friend of mine that uh, used to take the long way places um, th just because uh, he could always keep the car moving. And his thought was, if the car is moving, you're getting there faster. Um, so whether or not it's actually the fastest route or not. And I think the same thing is, is true here. It's, it's, it, it helps it helps you let it sit in the tub. If you feel like it's doing something in particular, um, rather than just like sitting there watching it, it the entire time. And it's just like a, a bump on a log. You're less anxious to, to go and grab it and then start cleaning it again. Um, so in that sense, I, I, I think I like the little pick it up and swish or, you know, I, I leave it in a, a nice place on the floor so it can be out of the way. I'll just walk by and I'll just sort of gently kick it every once in a while and let it just sort of bounce back and forth. It yeah, might not be the best, but uh, yeah, it, 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 it's the, the same thing as hitting the side of the TV to make the reception come in. It, it won't really help, but it makes you feel better. Um, <laughs> but uh, and. Yeah. And just to, to, to go back to one of the things you were talking about earlier, for the initial rinse, I've not really heard that uh, distilled water was necessary for the soap. You could actually use tap water for that. And that it was the, only the, the final rinse that needed the, the, the distilled water because it won't leave any residue when it cleans mm -hmm. it off. Yeah. Um, I guess it depends on the quality of your water, too. Well, you have to be careful if you're, if you're using, like, tap water uh as your soaking agent whenever you take it out you have to make sure that you can't let it dry because if it dries yeah. you'll get water spots and they'll be hard to get off yeah, yeah. And, and, that, that's, and then i think that's the if you're not made of tap or made of uh, distilled water and mind you there are plenty of great tutorials on how to to boil your tap water into distilled <clears> water it's just like it it's i'm lazy or, it's just cheaper to, to buy it yeah corner grocery store or gas station. Uh, the, the, yeah. the, there's actually, yeah. a, the, I've uh, always thought it was really parts. funny. There's a, yeah, auto parts stores, uh, hardware stores. Truck stops. Yeah, there's a, a, I always thought it was just fantastic. There's a, a, a place to stop and get sandwiches right next to our, our dark sky site that uh, you walk in and they sell distilled water there. So yeah, yeah. there's an all-in-one shop on the way to the dark sky site yeah. um, that, that, that has just been <laughs> made. Um, yeah, regarding water though, um, like in my house, I have the double double um, filtered water. One is the uh, see, I, I would live in the country, so I have a well. I have to filter my water because it's got a fair amount of uh, iron and manganese in it, so I have to get that off first. But then I filter it again for the drinking water, and that gets uh, down to about a thousandth of a micron, you know, some r ridiculous amount. It, it it gets bacteria out of the water. Or even so uh, that's good for cleaning like you said but for, for for rinsing the distilled water is really where you need to go and um and you can just you know gently pour it over in a very slight trickle i prefer what i prefer to do is to either use a measuring cup or you know once you empty this bottle clean it out and put the distilled water in this and you've got a very gentle stream that you can control and you just want to gently pour the water over the mirror at an angle like this so it it slides off very gently and but evenly and you keep doing this and what's going to happen is you're going <laughs> to you're going to see the entire mirror coated in a layer of water and that means that it still has some oils and residues on it you have to you have to keep pouring it off until that nice even coating sheen of uh, coated sheen of water disappears from the uh, the mirror and it turns into nice little rivulets and beads and right and slides off then at that point you've got all of the dirt and detergents and oils off the mirror and it's completely clean uh, and and it doesn't take that long to do it and so it's it's and it's very easy to do and that's where distilled water comes in so uh, is so critical you know using something very pure um, some people use alcohol 
you know, like uh, isopropyl alcohol. Something that evaporates very quickly. Yeah. Because, yes. And uh, for that matter, vodka. Uh, I mean, because it's, it's, it's ethyl alcohol. Well, I'm not, uh, not going to drink it after it's been on a mirror, Meryl. <laughs> it, it, it's an enhancer. You just. <laughs> um, on the um, stirring thing, um, the like weak clean um jacob and i like anytime we were walking by we'd grab a popsicle stick and just agitate the water a little bit drop it and go back around just anytime we were walking by and we and, used a uh, popsicle stick so that we weren't getting oil from our hands yeah that's, that's probably a, a much better way of doing it uh, normally the the oils or the the soap will actually encapsulate the oils in it and then it'll yeah. sort of case it so it shouldn't matter that much but yeah the safer way is to is to stir it up with a, a a non-reactive stick like that. Um, yeah, and, and we were talking to Chris earlier, and he recommended using uh, gloves. You know, like, um, you know, you go to the, the your favorite Chinese stamp, uh, rubber stamp buffet, and they've got the uh, boxes of those little thin plastic gloves, and those would be perfect because, you know, they're, you know, what, a dime for a whole box full of them. And, um, and you, you, whatever, I don't know what they are, but, um, uh, you know, they're, they're, you're, you're still nimble. You still have the use of all of your fingers and you keep the oil, you, you keep the oils from your hands from getting into the water and settling on the mirrors or the lenses, whatever you're and, cleaning. And then possibly equally as important, it, it helps keep your fingerprints from getting on the mirror itself. Um, yeah. if, in case you're incautious, the main thing to do when handling the mirrors is always handle it by the edges and not the, the surface. Yeah. 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 Like this, not like that. Yeah, like like how Meryl's thumb is it's leaning over the top there. Yeah, you don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, but he's right because even if you're touching the edges, you know, some of that oils that are on your fingers, especially if you just finished eating something oily, can migrate from the edge onto the surface. But um, there's an... an if we could talk about lenses for a little bit, one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to soak your eyepieces in water. Because, <laughs> so, um, you know, it's obvious, you know, you get water inside it and you've got a real problem getting the water out. Um, and most of the time you don't need to take your lenses apart to clean the interior parts. Uh, there have been some extreme cases where I've had to do that. I had to do that after the flood because one box of my eyepieces went underwater. And uh, I had to take uh, some of the lenses apart and clean the interior parts and dry them out and put them back together and save them. Um, well, also the interesting thing about the, the, the lenses is that uh, even though you can't necessarily tell the curvature, that there is a right direction and a wrong direction for each particular element of the lens. Even though it looks like one lens, they're all multi-element lenses at this point. Um, so the, the typical eyepiece, like the the, I think the the basic level plossels that are you know five ten dollars or or something like a four element eyepieces two element eyepieces. So I remember that was one of the first things that I did when I, I first got my first lens is I wanted to clean it and it, it looked dirty, so I took the thing apart and the lenses fell apart. And I remember looking at it and trying to to put it back together in exactly the right place, and it still didn't look right. And uh, mm -hmm. I'm still not sure if it's back together properly, um, but. You shouldn't ever have that problem with the, the lenses unless something absolutely terrible has happened. Mainly, you, you can worry about just uh, cleaning the external. And that goes more to cleaning lenses as opposed to cleaning mirrors. And cleaning lenses is a completely different piece from cleaning right. mirrors. Um, whereas with the, the, the lenses, you'd want to use a different type of solvent more than just the soap and water. You, uh, Almost like a glass cleaner, but something less abrasive than glass cleaner. And generally, people use a, a very specialized formula that they, you know, picked up from so and so, the the ultra scientist that grabbed it from the the mountain top when he was studying how to be a, a master optician back in yeah, whenever. Uh, everybody's got their secret formula um, and yeah. their their particular techniques. But the main thing is, you don't want to just grab Windex Alpha the 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 store shelf spray it onto the lens grab some you know paper towels and rub it off um yeah. like you, you might for for whatever and it, it's actually going to be a little bit even uh, technically the same you use the same technique for cleaning your your 
eyeglasses, except for people clean their eyeglasses a lot more frequently and they replace their eyeglasses a lot more frequently than you'd want to, to replace your you know, giant triplet reflector. Um, so you, you want to use very gentle techniques for cleaning lenses. Scott. Um, and we're going to have a separate talk uh, later in the year on how to clean um, a very a specific type of lens, the uh, corrector plates. Mm -hmm. um, for the SCTs, uh, which we have sitting around in the brass closet behind <laughs> Merrill there. Um, and uh, we've got one It came in to us. It was donated to the club, and it was in very poor shape um, from where the, the spiders had, had attacked it. Um, and I'm generally not afraid of spiders, but I'm afraid of what spiders will do to lenses um, over time, especially when they've been uh, sealed up and left in a tube for, or in a closet for, for some amount of time, or in a garage. Um, they, they can do some really bad things, addicts in particular. Um, 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 but we're going to have a, a note, talk on work on that. Just a note on um, lenses in general, whether it's um, for a camera or a telescope, you never want to use paper towels, ever, <laughs> ever. When you said, said that, Scott, I literally cringed. Well, yeah, I, I actually, I remember my, my brother has eyeglasses and I mean, it has from a young age. And I remember he, he got the, the eyeglass cleaning kits and it was always a special, you know, secret tissue that was just the, the gentlest thing that it, it's not even Kleenex. And uh, it, you don't even want to use regular, you have to use just the purest Kleenex, same as you use pure soap because any dyes and soaps on there that uh, have become popular because they, if you wiping your nose all the time it gets raw and they, they add lotions to it and yeah that'll that'll get on the glass um but oddly enough the paper towels do become useful when cleaning mirrors um in particular the last phase when you're rinsing off the soap and water with the distilled water you pour it off and the idea is that the thing will just run off completely but occasionally some little bits of water will get stuck on the mirror itself that just won't run off if you take a little bit of a paper towel or a lint-free cloth and you just touch it to the mirror, not rub, just touch it to it, it'll absorb the water and help you pull that last rivulet off of the mirror itself. Yeah. Um, so it, it, it's, just touching it's the not useless. Help would be enough. Yeah. So you're not rubbing it. You're just letting it soak up. Um, Meryl, it'd be the same thing you... as like planting. One thing you don't want to use is a blow dryer. <laughs> Do not use a blow dryer. <laughs> oh God, but I, I don't know about that. The, the blow dryers are, uh, well, not to get the water off, but yeah, I've used them before and to, to heat the mirror up to get the dew off. Um, oh yeah. That's well, a very, very popular method of yeah, doing that different. for eyepieces and, and lenses. But you're not um, doing it directly different. on it. <laughs> no, there's, there's actually, I'm, I'm tempted. There is a, a, a I, I see the, the little, advertisements for a particular hardware store in town that are advertising a a, a nine volt defroster that you put on the the windshield of your car and you plug into a like a nine volt outlet and it, it occurred to me well i've got a defroster on my car that works pretty well boy that would be just great for in the field i could plug that into my power supply and just like instead of the unplug the do heater plug that in and turn it on the scoop for a little bit. And I, I might have to drop the, the, the 10 bucks on that thing or however little it costs for, you know, that tiny amount of heat for a basically a portable hair dryer. I, I, oh, I'll enough, you know. Huh? Sorry, I just saw a message from Steven in chat and I thought I was muted. Steven says, do not use Comet. And I'm like, what? <laughs> that there was, we did have one member of, uh, a former member of Brass who, uh, was just desperate to clean their telescope that actually used uh, like a, a a steel brush and some some vomit to to clean a mirror once, um, which is a big no no because the, these things they they scratch. You think of them again like eyeglasses. Yeah. Oh, it's more delicate than that. You can use a feather across a, a telescope mirror and scratch it. Yeah. The, uh, the, I think the, the, the advice I had seen on terms of brushing is uh, generally when you think you're, everybody wants to clean their mirrors the second it gets a little bit of dust on it. But you have, you can actually wait quite a while for that. Um, uh, Meryl's original comment was that uh, you can wait until things are growing off the mirror 
and uh, you'll still you'll still see pretty well but yeah at that point it's probably time to clean the mirror um the easiest way to assuage some of these problems is instead of starting the cleaning process and soaking and all that sometimes what you can get away with is pulling the mirror off and taking a a, a camel haired brush and just gently in one motion moving across the mirror in one clean swipe and just gently gently cleaning off the top layer of dust um mm -hmm. and i've heard that will work pretty well and that that's generally the, the same advice for cleaning the, the scts that uh, you've got is uh uh, start by with brushing off the loose dirt and then move on to the, the cleaning agents. Um, you, uh, again, you run into the air, the possibility of uh, dragging the, the dust across the surface of the mirror. And, and so that gets to be dangerous. Um, yeah, there, that, are, there are different kinds of brushes you can use for lenses that are very good. I've got a, a little finishing brush that, um, you know, professional painters use. That Ooh, is, those is, tend to be know, soft. Yeah, it's fantastic for cleaning lenses. It's very, very soft. And um, um, uh, what's it? Sable, sable brushes. I was, I was going to suggest sable. Those, those are yeah. incredibly soft. Yeah, they're they're fantastic for that. And uh, also, um, it's very hard to find. But if um, if you ever happen to come across a you know, brush that gold leaf uh, sign makers use. Uh, they're also very good. They're they're actually softer and more flexible bristles than the types of brushes that Amy and I were just talking about. And what those are for is gold leaf is very very fine, and it comes in tiny in very extremely thin sheets. And whenever they uh, layer it on the glass, uh, they they you know they paint the numbers on, and then uh, it's a little gel that's on on the glass with, in this form of the letters. And they take the um, the brush and rub it in their hair to build up static electricity. And then they touch the foil, the, the gold foil, and the static electricity makes the gold foil stick to the brush. And then they pick it up and the little gold foil is waving in the wind like this. And then they just lay it right on top of the glass where the lettering is already painted out and it sticks to wherever the paint is on the glass. And um, those brushes work fantastic for, uh, for, for uh, um, lenses, but they're hard to find. I only know about them because my neighbor used to do that, and I got a couple from him. But if you know anybody who does that, they may be able to find some for you, or I have some spares. This may be going one step further than where you wanted to, to talk, but uh, the other thing I mentioned is when you put it back in the cell and you tighten things down, not to over tighten so you don't pinch. Yeah. And, and a lot of people, it, before they remove it from the cell, will, will mark the mirror so that you, they keep the orientation for reinserting it correctly. It won't actually, with the the, the newts like this and the, the parabolic mirrors, they really won't make that much of a difference. It'll just make it a little bit easier to, to mark right put it back together. But yeah, the, the collimating process will work out those problems eventually. Um, but the main thing is there are going to be slight imperfections in the mirror um, that when you, you want to put it in the same way you took it out. Um, and that'll come into to play when we talk about SETs in, in, a, in a few months. Um, because the SETs are, yeah, there's, those things are machined to be with it very tight tolerances. Um, yeah, and, 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 and if you, got, you don't ever want to remove to clean a mirror, you, you never want to have to take off the corrector plate. Never, ever. And like, this is, a, a, God, I, I, even collimating an SCT is, is a, a, a complete pain but uh, to having to collimate it and reorient the mirror is yeah you you might need to, to buy a special device to, to make it work yeah. exactly so uh, what about possible. when you replace the what about when you replace the secondary with an astro camera <laughs> that is a, well, I mean, that requires you to to, to recollimate the, the mirror except for the yeah. uh, oddly enough i've been told that the uh one of the advantages of the uh, the hyperstar system is that you don't really have to to recollimate when you're switching back and forth, um, because that that the collimate the way that they orient the mirror is is pretty much standard, and that's just built into to how the the hyperstar is working. Um, but uh, I, I don't know. I haven't checked that out. I think that instead of the it, a lot of people instead of buying the hyperstars nowadays will just buy the uh, the the uh, the the all-in ones, the 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 ones that are built that way, um, as Astro cams and not as modified SATs. Uh, the uh, uh, God, I cannot come up with the, the name of them. Uh, uh, Richie Catanes. 
um, mm -hmm. that, that they'll use those instead of the, uh, the ones with the, the hybrid star. Um, and in which case, they don't have to reorient the mirror. They just have to, to plug the camera back in. Yeah. Um, which uh, that gets a, a little bit ahead of ourselves. And uh, we'll do that for talk for another day. Um, all right. So any any questions for Merrill on uh, thoughts on how to clean it, common problems and uh, other type of things? I was just going to bring up uh, having a not necessarily a full field kit, but a field kit of some kind, um, you know, anybody that's gone to Hodges, right? Rest in peace. Um, pollen is horrible there. So, you know, we have to worry about that when we go to Hodges or anything that time of year, pollen's blowing through the air, but should, you know, the worst happen while you're out at one of these observing sites, Okie text, you name it. And like, you know, a bird poops on your mirror, right? Flies <laughs> over, which has happened to somebody I know um while he was doing outreach um so it's nice to have the tub because they usually come with a lid and you can keep everything in there and store it in transit the cotton swabs don't take up much room uh you don't need much dish soap so you can find a little you know small bottle to keep that in um but having a field kit for when you're going out to those kinds of things is a good idea and like Scott was saying earlier, you know, you can get distilled water at gas stations. So, I mean, should you really have an emergency, you probably don't have to go very far to find distilled water, but I always bring some with me just in case. Yeah. And uh, when you go to someplace like Texas Star Party where you clean a mirror and it's dusty before you put it back in because it's so dusty out there, that makes a difference. And uh, pollen, God, is if you ever look at pollen under a microscope, it's extremely abrasive. So we get it off as quickly as you can. But I want to go back to a point that Coy made earlier about when you mount the mirror back in its cell. You might be able to see there's three tabs, one here, one here, and one over here, that keep the, um, that there, there you can see an edge view of it, that clamps the mirror into its holding cell. And he said you don't want to tighten those up too much. You might you not be able to see it here but there's actually a little cork pad underneath the metal clamp. And that cork pad is to uh, make a soft contact on the mirror, but it's, it's soft, but it's firm and keeps it in place. And, um, and like you said, you don't want to tighten that down too much. And there's two reasons for that. One reason is if you tighten it down too much, you might damage the coating. And the other reason is because if you tighten it down too much, you can actually flex the mirror a little bit and distort the image that you get from it. So they're just uh, tighten it down, you know, just enough to where it's a, a good solid contact, but not tight uh, and not too tight, just firm. It's good enough. Um, what do you recommend for cleaning smudges off of eyepieces? I noticed that when I was packing up from the conjunction at Burbank, that I had, it looked like someone had left eyelash marks, streaks on my eyepiece. Yeah. And I'm like, hmm, how do I get rid of this? <laughs> well, the, uh, my generally thought is uh, they, a, a lot of people sell lens pens, um, and those will do a pretty good job, especially in the field. But and, and for some reason, I have no idea why, but it outreaches people like to put their eyeball on the glass um, without realizing that their eyeballs are wet and leave a little residue afterwards. I have no idea why. I, I've come up with theories, but... Uh, it, it I think it's mostly because they don't know where to put their eyeball. Yeah, I think that's probably it. Is they, they, they think that by getting closer, it'll make it larger or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But at any rate, it, it happens with a certain regularity. Um, so eventually, you're going to want to take some, some lens cleaning pollution, solutions like we were talking about earlier. And actually, uh, you just spray that on the, the, the piece of lint-free cloth and then dab that onto the eyepiece and then you take the, the other another piece and you just sort of wipe the, the residue back off um, there's a, a very complicated technique to, to doing it it's the same basic technique as for uh, cleaning uh, lenses or refractors and things like that um but uh, obviously you don't need to worry as much about it because in general if it, well in, until you're 
using the the eight hundred dollar <throat> two inch, you know, seven whatever, you know, super lens or with eighty two degrees, ninety five, hundred five degree, you know, whatever. Um, but the the, the ten dollar colossals, yeah, you, you can just I, I'd almost say rub it with a Kleenex, but no, don't rub it with a Kleenex <laughs> or with a, a handkerchief. Excuse me. Um, get just a, a, a Kleenex and a, a hop on the lens to if it's a little stubborn and you can get away with that. Just, just try not to scratch it. Don't use anything abrasive to remove it. But lens pens is are th those things are definitely always in my kit, my travel kit. Um, yeah, I would suggest maybe we do a lecture on a field kit because I've never taken mine outside of a standard outreach. Okay. I've never gone to a star party with one of my telescopes, so I don't know all of the interesting stuff that can happen. I have a little, like, maintenance kit that survived the flood that I now have one in my apartment and one lives in my car. I, yeah, I've, I've got one for every kit that I've got. Has a, Basically, it's a simple kit that it has a lens pen, a brush, a, a blower, um, some, some lint-free pads, and um, I, I've got a little... Uh, tiny little perfume bottle full of this uh, lens cleaning solution that I carry with me all, every time I go out, just in case. Um, usually I don't need more than the, the blower, the brush, and the, the lens pen, and that'll get me to something that I can at, at least look at through the lens again until I can get it to some place where I can rescue it. Um, the, 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 the simple things like that. Um, other than that, for the, the larger issues, I'll usually keep a, a, a collimating laser or I, a Cheshire, um, I, although obviously I don't carry a Cheshire. That's the the same way I, I don't carry the, the, the bow and the saw to, to make fire if I'm in the wild. No, I've, I've got a lighter somewhere or some magic. Um, I know how to do it. I wouldn't want to do it. Um, I've, I've got a laser that I that I keep in the bag if I want to collimate the eyepiece or to collimate the, the newt. Um, um, little things like that. And uh, also, I'll, I'll generally carry a, a, a Gosh, I hate to admit it, but I I carry a pair of pliers with me, um, because the the pliers and, the, and a screwdriver, because these things are always the, the pliers are very very useful in lots of situations, and the screwdriver, well, for some reason the the one that they ships with the the telescopes usually, are, gosh, they're they're super useful on all the telescopes. Like you, you really don't need another screwdriver, um, which is why I've got three of them. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Probably more. When I said maintenance kit, I'm meaning half of the stuff that came with the telescope. Because I gave like one of them because Haley's. There we are. Yeah. Yeah, I, I lost my connection there for a minute. And I'll... Everything froze up. Yeah, that, I think it probably just, the, who knows, that the internet got busy for a second. Maybe the the Super Bowl came back on or something. Yeah. I don't know. Did we lose Amy? Oh, there she is. Yeah, I'm here. I'm not sure how well people heard me since I was talking when that happened. I'm like, did I break it? <laughs> It's, it's possible, but... Uh, but uh, I'm saying that I ended up with two sets of um, assembly stuff for my telescope because the equipment survived because it was in my car. The telescope did not. So when I got a replacement scope that was a pretty much identical, I wound up with two sets. So one stays in my car and one stays at my apartment. So I always have stuff to make last minute adjustments in the field. Yeah, I, I did something similar with uh, winning a duplicate of the telescope that I've got. So anytime I need a part on the telescope, I just take it off of the other one. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. oh. No, I, I, that, that, that's going to a, a, a nephew, actually. Um, you know, there was a kid who was very bitter about that. He's like, he won again. Scott won again. And I'm out at the um, gate and I'm like, wait, what? 
<laughs> it's, I'm sorry, this is it's, it's a bit of an inside joke, and uh, yeah, it, it turns out that uh, you, it is possible to 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 win a, a lottery twice, especially if only forty people buy into a, a, a lottery, <laughs> and and you you bought three of those or, or five of them or or what have you. Um, I, I remember Craig for I remember Craig has now won this so often he'll come in and buy like fifty tickets at a time. Um, I remember being there at the the observatory when Craig won a pair of binoculars a, a few years back, and somebody went to go tell him, "Hey, hey, Craig, these are yours." And he's like, "What's this?" It's like, "Well, you won the binoculars." Like, "Oh, again? Okay, I, I I'll find something to do with them." <laughs> like, just nonchalantly let it go off. I'm sure he's got a, a nice stack of telescopes somewhere too. Um, he, well, he's got his own uh, observatory set up on his house, so yeah, I should imagine he, he has a few. Um, um, one thing I don't remember, we, we may have gotten sidetracked at that point, but uh, I don't think Merrill covered why not to use the spray, uh, the, the can of air. Oh, no, it didn't. Oh. Yeah. Do you, you want to tell it, Corey? Since you started? Okay. You, you've got the floor. <laughs> <laughs> I think the obvious, uh, yeah, but I, I guess you all know what uh, Corey's talking about, the cans of, uh, sp uh air spray. Right that you use to complete uh, to clean your computer keyboard and in the you know inside of your computer or whatever else and there's a there's a couple of reasons you don't want to use that it's because it's like a hurricane you know <laughs> if you think <laughs> over your mirror is going to scratch it you know raking the dust across just imagine that cold uh, hard blast of air coming out like a jet from that uh from that can how much uh that's going to blow the dust across the uh surface of your mirror and also if you it the air is very cold when it comes out so you can induce some thermal shock uh into the uh into the glass and into the um coatings so you know if you have a, a too strong a temperature difference you can put micro fractures into your glass oh. coatings also one thing that it, I, i've done this before myself just because uh i was over anxious and i believe that i i could somehow know better than all the the sagely wisdom of the ages is that the the air coming out of the can is is actually nitrogen chilled or something like that so it, it in actually expanding through the the you know it, it in releasing it it expands and all that so sometimes if it's going out too fast or you're too close to the mirror or at the wrong angle you will actually spit out some liquid through the thing onto the mirror and you'll end up leaving a nice little spot of this frozen uh activant or whatever it is that it's using to spit out on the gas and that will actually leave a stain um on the mirror and that's the main reason not to use the the canned air is you you know it's basically the exact same thing as why you don't blow onto the mirror you'll spit onto it i think yeah. this should be chris telling me that uh he, he needs to leave uh oh Nope, this is the, the, the audio is out for, for a lot of people, I'm told. Uh, yeah, and yeah, he follows that up by saying that he, he may have to, to leave out. I think he's, a, yeah, I can see these little red marks on the, the top left-hand corner of a lot of people. It, it's showing that uh, the, the connection is getting pretty spotty. Uh, so with that, I guess we'll go ahead and end the, the, the presenter portion of the meeting. We'll get back to our... Uh, usual standard meeting which may, everybody's invited to it to, to remain with us uh we're not you know and normally this is the point where we invite the, the speaker to go back and live his life with his family and, and he can leave us to the wilds but uh, meryl's part of the family so you know we'll, yeah. we'll let our crazy uncle stay with us um and we'll, we'll turn off the the youtube so that uh, the, the the rest of the public doesn't have to watch our family squabbles Oh, um, may I present what I learned from last time? Y'all had a question asked of the speaker, and I got oh. pulled in. Yeah, we uh, very uh, we had last week or last time we had the uh, a speaker on the the Mars rover, and uh, we we got to talking about the speeds of the uh, the rovers and how how fast it moves and whatnot, and uh, we mentioned that the the, the Mars rover is actually a very slow, slow robot. Um, so we thought, well, what's faster, the Mars rover or the the space shuttle crawler over at Cape Canaveral? If we were to put the two of them in a race, who would win? 
So naturally, instead of just looking up the speeds of these things and doing the math ourselves, we asked NASA to do it for us, um, which they did because they're cool people. Um, and Amy now is, has the answer for us. Um, the crawler goes one mile per hour loaded, two miles per hour unloaded. And Perseverance, Percy, as um, Sarah Mercott, who is the um, Mars um, media liaison for NASA, said, goes a blazing 4.4 centimeters a second. And when you calculate that out to miles per hour, the crawler is 10 times faster than Perseverance at its top speed. So, yeah, the, the space shuttle... A crawler fully loaded on its way to, to the launch site would absolutely smoke the Mars crawler. In a, in a race. It goes 0 0.098 miles per hour. <laughs> and and it would oh, crush man. the Mars rover in a flash. Yeah, and it and it would not only do that, but it would actually like crush it if, if even if we gave the Mars especially if we gave Mars rover a head start. Um, and put them in the exact same track, then, to, to, yep, it would literally crush it to death. It um, could have the coordinator of source system ambassadors. Is on. And um, they're like, well, they were intrigued by your aunt. I don't know, but we'll try and find an answer for you. And I um, got an email saying, um, we were intrigued by your question. Here's the answer. And I'm like, Huh. That's great. Um, well, Amy, the, unfortunately, we, we probably should have added, what about the helicopter attached? Um, so if you could get back to us on that one, um, what the inquiring minds want to know. And uh, yeah, let, as long as we're harassing NASA, let's harass NASA. Um, but, I think it can only fly 90 seconds at a time, so I'm not sure it can get very far either way. Because it has to uh, stay in line of sight of curiosity, otherwise it can't talk to NASA. Huh. So yeah, in the short run, so we might actually have a rabbit in the hair type thing where for quick and start, the, the helicopter will beat it, but it'll have to, to stop and rest while the, the rover catches up. So yeah, this is, I, I think that this is a, another problem. It, uh, we'd have to, to give a designated distance for the, the, the race to take place on. Um, probably if it beat it in a, 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 you know, 30 foot race, it might not survive a 5k. Um, who knows? All right. Uh, so, Ingenuity thank you, Amy. Four pounds. The helicopter only weighs four pounds. Well, I guess if it landed on the rover and uh, it was teetering just on the the front of it, it could it could you know it, it could take advantage. All <laughs> right. Uh, so that having been said, thank you, Amy, for the update, and uh, I hope everybody has found this uh, amusing, if informative, if not amusing, and. Uh, we will see everybody next month for the uh, the, the public meeting. And uh, goodbye to, to everybody on YouTube. And uh, come.